Captain Planet. He's a hero, gonna take pollution down to zero. You have to love a hero who saves the day while minimizing the impact to the Earth. In a world where superheroes will cause enough destructive damage to negate the good they're doing, this seems like a good virtue. And everyone has some responsibility and stewardship of the planet, but is Captain Planet the hero we need? Is he a good champion against pollution? For all those composting messages, Team Planet has some curious treatment of different environmental situations, some which would have some pretty disastrous consequences. We poked fun at Ms. Frizzle for wrong lessons, but most of that show was careful in its representation of the situation. Captain Planet, on the other hand, is a fair bit looser. I'm Alyssa, and today on Channel Frederator, we're counting down the six times the Captain Planet crew caused disasters. Let's get started. Number six. Captain Planet tells the Mayans their gods are dead and I've lost my Mayan. The Planeteers stumble back in time and find themselves in the decline of the Mayan Empire, where Mati is mistaken for the child of a pair of blasphemers and set up to be sacrificed for better crop yield. That's unfortunate. So they want to summon the Cap to lay down the beatdown on the Mayans, but Wheeler lost his ring. So it's, you know, back to the future, just not the movie. Rather than just popping in to find Wheeler's ring, they show their new friend how his religion is a lie and got everyone he ever knew and loved killed and lost to history. Yay. Hey, they find the ring and head back in time to rescue Mati, who is handling things well because, you know, the heart ring is the best and I don't care what anyone says. Our Mayan family is reunited, Captain Planet saves the Planeteers, and we get a little heart to heart about the knowledge that the Mayans are doomed. What does Captain Planet say? Does he give them tips on how to live in a more sustainable way? Does he teach them better ways to grow food? Does he tell them to be more clear in their calendars so that conspiracy theorists don't freak out? Nope, he says. Sorry, I don't have time for small talk. I gotta blow. And then proceeds to blow away a group of Mayan priests. Hey, your gods are foolish and your civilization is doomed. I wanted to tell you that, but I don't have solutions to offer. Good luck, though. We're gonna go back to the future with video games and air conditioning and stuff. Later, power to deprive people of hope is yours. Number five, Captain Planet hollows out the earth in Reign of Terror. Acid rain is bad. I'm glad we can all agree on that one. It can mess up all kinds of things. So when Scum decides that he is going to create a massive acid rainstorm, you guessed it, it's up to Captain Planet to save the day. Something needs to be clarified, though. Scum creates a super acid rain. It destroys and corrodes plants upon contact. This is something that needs to be stopped, and the cleanup would be hard no matter where it happened. Plus, the runoff would be a significant risk. I mean, fair play to Captain Planet. This is a dilemma lacking good solutions. So what does he do? Well, he dives into the earth and pulls out an improbably large chunk of sodium carbonate, a base that should help neutralize the acid. Except it's an absurd amount. Like, he actually pulls out a small mountain of the stuff to neutralize the one storm. What about the earth where he got it from? Leaving pockets of earth suddenly hollow is not a good thing. External pressure could cause the land to collapse and swallow up anything on the surface, not to mention all the organisms living in the ground where Captain Planet extracted the mineral. Just because worms and tiny bugs aren't something we see doesn't mean they don't have an important place in our environment. Captain Planet pays them no mind in his hasty mining operation. Isn't that something that sounds like a villain's ploy? Mining without safety regulation for your own ends? That's a page out of Loot and Plunder's playbook. Does Gaia ever have a sit down with her champion to make sure they're on the same page about how things should be done? I'm just saying, maybe they should take a break to hash some of these things out. Number four. Captain Planet hates space in every episode ever. When he's not being weakened by pollution or making bad puns, Captain Planet is a pretty strong guy and can get stuff done. And let's be fair, his job is hard. Pollution is tough to clean up, especially something that deals with small particles like nuclear fallout. So if a bomb is about to go off, and there is always a bomb about to go off, the situation is pretty grim for Earth. In several episodes, this involves throwing the bomb into the reaches of space where it can't hurt the people of Earth. So where's the environmental disaster? Well, everywhere that isn't here. In fairness, if a nuke were to be fired into the sun, it wouldn't have an impact. But even if he does aim directly at the sun, and he doesn't always do this, he's still risking tons of environmental problems out in space. That debris has to go somewhere and could impact a number of celestial bodies or get caught in orbit around our own planet. We already have trouble getting satellites up and rotating about without crashing into each other. We don't need to add detonated nukes to the mix. What if an alien happens to be cruising by and Earth's mightiest hero blows them into kingdom come? Under normal circumstances, it wouldn't be fair to use aliens in a discussion of real environmental disasters, but they are canon in the Captain Planet universe. Captain Planet himself is abducted along with the Planeteers at one point. Remember, Planeteers, I am Earth's mightiest hero, not the universe's mightiest hero. The power to stay out of my neighborhood is yours. Number three, Captain Planet ignores important technological advances in no small problem. We all know that if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. There aren't magic bullet solutions to life's problems. This is one of the more realistic lessons the show teaches. That said, when the villains come up with technology that is useful, it might be time to take it seriously. Sly Sludge tries to take shortcuts to dispose of waste while making tons of money. Not a noble venture, we can all agree there, but when he invests in a shrinking machine to turn 
garbage into a manageable problem, that seems like a good idea. Maybe too good to be true, but if the machine works, that could be outstanding. And the machine does work. Well, sort of. It can temporarily shrink anything, including the meddlesome Planeteers. But that's still impressive and deserves some more research. When the garbage starts to grow back to its normal size, Captain Planet just lets the machine be crushed in the expanding refuse. Captain, give that to scientists and let them play around with it for a little bit. Maybe they could do some research of their own and get it up and running effectively. Worst case scenario, you build a machine that fires a shrinking rate at regular intervals to keep the waste problem small continuously. You could also shrink the refuse and then launch it into the sun before it grows, as Captain Planet is so fond of doing, as we've seen. Just because the first prototype didn't work doesn't mean the solution is invalid. This is an environmental disaster through an action. The power is yours. But if I don't like your idea, I'll send everything back to square one. Number two, Captain Planet spreads disease in Scumlord. Scum is Master Splinter gone wrong, a mutant rat that loves ruining the world and doesn't even like normal rats. In one episode, he's contaminating water supplies with the rat rot disease, which turns people into rat mutants under his control. I guess that's sort of pollution, though it's more of a bioweapon, whatever. This isn't the most off message part of the show. Anyways, Linka, Guy, and Wheeler all fall victim to the disease. Have you ever heard the term plague rat? I'm guessing you have because rats are often cited as one of the leading spreaders of the bubonic plague. You know, the Black Death. Rats have a nasty tendency to get into a lot of places and serve as tremendous disease vectors. The Planeteers have literally created plague rats out of their own. Number one, the Planeteers drop the bomb and a good bomb is hard to find. Tech savvy genius Dr. Blight receives a visit from her future self with a dire warning. In the future, everyone loves peace and keeping the planet clean. There's no room for people like her. The time machine is her one chance at ruining the future. So the Dr. Blights do what any good villains would do. They sell nukes to Hitler. Okay. They don't go quite as far as calling him Hitler, but they do call him the Fuhrer, and he is so evil that his cold stare is enough to render Captain Planet weak. I get that this is a cute message, hate is just as bad of a pollutant as smog, but the Earth needs a better protector than a guy who goes down when someone looks at him the wrong way. This scene could only be weirder and more uncomfortable if Wheeler and Linka had an argument right there on the spot about how to divide up Germany. Either way, Captain Planet manages to work through his weakness and heave the bomb off into space, which we're going to come back to in a minute, and save everyone from the future of the man in the high castle. Hooray! or it would be happy if that's where the episode left off. While escorting the Doctor Blights away, one of them tries to sell the formula for building a nuke. Captain Planet yanks her through the time portal and she drops the book, which is recovered by the allied forces. The soldier remarks that he should get it to the science boys because it might be important. That's right, carelessness by Captain Planet was the reason for the only two nuclear weapons attacks in history. Remember, Planeteers, the road to hell is paved with good intention. The power is yours. Thanks for watching Channel Frederator's countdown of the six times the Captain Planet crew caused environmental disasters. Agree or disagree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And remember, Frederator loves you.